I know that it can be intimidating to have an interior designer come into your home for some people. I always said if you knew me, you wouldn't worry a thing about that. I've seen disastrous messes and I've seen homes that were so beautiful. I was wondering, why are you calling me here? I had one client who said, if I want my house clean, I tell my wife that Sherry's coming over. (laughs) It's so funny. So she'd whip the place into shape. But really, I don't care. If you don't have time to clean before I come for a consultation, I'm fine with that. Because most times designers are not concerned with the present state, but they're concerned with the outcome, with the end design. I can see through the current state and then I'm thinking about the outcome, how it could be in the future. I may not have the full design, but I am going there. So if you'd like some helpful tips on how to prepare for an interior design consultation, stay tuned to this episode. Hi, I'm Sherry Douglas, and welcome to the Faith-Led Interior Design Show. Let's start as we always do with our verse of the week. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And that's from the New International Version, or it's called the NIV Version. No matter the circumstances, the Lord is always with his children. This symbolism represents the concern and the compassion that a shepherd has for his sheep. The rod conveys the concept of authority, power, discipline, and defense of the sheep. The staff represents all that is long-suffering and kind. I am greatly comforted by this verse, and I pray that you are too. Okay, so how do you prepare for a helpful interior design consultation? So many times when I go to an initial consultation with clients, they have thought after thought, and they've always thought a lot about their projects. But in spite of this, they've not been able to solve the design problems with solutions that are, you know, that they're excited about or they can visualize. We may not completely solve the problem at the first meeting. Probably we won't. But we will gain a solid design direction. Whether homeowners feel that there's too many options or they're hemming and hawing over possibilities, any forethought is helpful as we determine the client's goals and desires. When we meet for an interior design consultation, this can be on-site or virtual, we'll need to tour the project. As we're touring and talking, we can get acquainted. It makes it so nice. I love to hear about your dreams. I love to hear about the ideas that you already have for each room. And I love to hear about your family and how your family uses each room. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and bell so you are notified next time a new video is uploaded. A good designer is not worried about how the project looks right now because that's why you called. So don't fret about this. This is an info gathering time. Perhaps there would be some early possible solutions, but most designers are not speed designers. Most designers gather the initial information, take it back to the office, think about the design, and the designers will also need your house plans if you have them, or the design firm can create house plans for you to scale. The house plan is used so you can figure out how the furniture will be laid out, what sizes are needed, and the traffic flow. The space plan is very helpful in furniture selection and to give the contractors the sizes and where you want to maybe do flooring or wallpaper or other quotes. So we set goals, we discuss the budget, and assess the lifestyle needs. It's incredibly important for both you and the designer to have this initial consultation. You can determine if this is the designer for you, if you feel comfortable with him or her. Is it somebody that you can work with and you want to work with? Is it somebody you're going to have fun with at the same time? Because a lot of times people are pretty uptight if it's been a hard design. They can't figure it out. So the designer a lot of times will take the edge off and it's like, okay, relax. We're going to get this figured out. And it just makes it so much easier. And the same is true for the designer. They're looking at you to see if this is somebody that they can work with. 
At the very least, you'll gain several tips that make the most of your time together. And at the most, there may be some great big decisions made. Okay, number one, consider your goals ahead of time. It's crucial to know the goals for each room. That is the first step. Many times, however, that's easier said than done. I remember one couple who were disagreeing about the direction that a part of the project should take. I told them they should do it this way. The husband said, okay, that sounds great. The wife became pretty upset because she said to him, I've been telling you that for two weeks now. And she said, she, meaning me, says it once and you say, okay. (laughs) She was not a happy camper, but we all laughed and all went very well. I think because maybe the other person isn't a professional, it's harder to just say okay sometimes. I get it. There are so many ways the designs can go, so many choices and so forth. It's hard to make a final educated decision. Okay, number two, discuss your budget in advance. It's a great idea to discuss and figure out your budget prior to your initial consultation. So have that conversation, at least a ballpark. The idea is to let the designer know what quality you're wanting. Don't give a VW budget if you want a Bentley quality. That makes sense. It will be exposed because you will not like the quality of the VW items that you told your designer you had the budget for. And that's what the designer selected. If you have wonderful architecture, then you need wonderful furniture to complete the look. Google some items that you like to get current pricing or approximate pricing, an estimate per area, what you'll need, and then add that up. Other clients have said, give me the best look for the best price in my quality. Others have told me they don't want a budget. They'll just buy what they like. And my personal favorite, Sherry, don't try to save me money. That was from my client, Donna. Okay, no problem, I won't. (laughs) She just wanted what she wanted, and that's a good thing. Number three, review the use of each of your rooms. For each area you want to design, it's helpful to have a better understanding of who uses the room and how they use it. When we start working together, I have a room design form that you can fill out for each space. By completing it for each room, it helps determine the whole house master plan as well. Number four, prepare yourself to be open and transparent. I love to meet people, to get to know them and their environments. It's so fulfilling to help them achieve their heart's desires and add value to their largest investment that they have, their home. It's important to be open to thoughts that you may not have had. My job is to help families create beautiful living spaces that are safe and function very well with their lifestyle. There's no judgment on what you want. Just tell me all of your thoughts and ideas and you will be heard. You need kids' toys area. You can't live without a coffee bar. You want four garages. You entertain all the time. Whatever your thoughts and needs are, let your wishes be known. Number five, present your desired pieces for the design. Another thing that the designer will need to know is items that you're wishing to keep. The designer will also need measurements of those pieces, first the width, then the depth, and then the height. That's the standard order of measuring a piece of furniture. Width first, from side to side, depth from front to back, and height from top to bottom. You or the designer will take pictures of all of those pieces and consider them in the design if possible. Number six, spend time searching out your preferences. I can't stress enough how much pictures from you help. Look for pictures of things that you love, not just like. It's very hard to find a room that's exactly what you want. So a variety of pictures of items that you love will help. One picture might have an area rug that you would like. Keep that picture and then write on it or put an arrow to the area rug. And then another might have a floor lamp that you like, and another might have a piece of artwork. Pinterest is a wonderful site for this. You can look at all kinds of things and then make a board for each room. The more you show the designer, the more it helps the designer. It may not be be the end result, but it shows the designer what you're thinking about, what you think might work. And it might even help you determine what you like and, you know, help you narrow down your design style. Lots and lots of pictures make me smile. It really, really helps. Picture definitely is worth a thousand words. Number seven, establish your decision-making process. When we meet, please have all the decision-makers present. 
Decisiveness is critical to an efficient strategy session or project launch. It's nice to have a process for making decisions in advance of the initial consultation. Bonus tips for you. Much more will be accomplished if there are no or few distractions during the consultation. Child care may be necessary. It's a good investment in this case. Perhaps silence your phones and focus your attention to accomplish the most that we can during this time. As I mentioned earlier, and will mention again because it's so important, keep an open mind as to new ideas and plans. Many times people will say no, but the next day after thought, they'll say, yeah, you know, that actually does make sense. I, it just wasn't part of my thought process at the time. I had to process it a little bit more, and that's perfectly fine. You will get new, fresh, wonderful ideas at this initial consultation. Be prepared and welcome them. Thank you for reading these initial consultation ideas and tips. I'm always thrilled to meet you and discover who you are, who your family is, and what you guys loved. It is an honor to help you achieve a home that allows you to live your life to the absolute fullest. You haven't scheduled a design consultation yet? There's no time like today. Reach out to us. We would be delighted to talk to you and see if we can work something out to work with you. As our verse for the week says, I pray that the Lord's with you, delighting and rejoicing over you with singing this week. And remember, he's your shepherd kindly and lovingly watching over you. So stop dreaming, start designing your luxury home and within your budget. Blessings and see you the next episode. If you're struggling to design or improve the interior of your home that mirrors your amazing self and within your budget, make sure to reach out. Email me at sherry at dcdouglasinteriors.com. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and remember to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Blessings until next time.